A SpaceX rocket will soon crash into the moon after chaotic orbit for seven years, experts say. SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket carrying the NOAA's Deep Space Climate Observatory spacecraft as it blasted off from Cape Canaveral in February 2015. The rocket will collide with the moon in a matter of weeks. In this video, we will tell you everything about the out-of-control SpaceX rocket on collision course with the moon. Number 3. A SpaceX rocket part to crash into the moon seven years after launch. A rocket launched by Elon Musk's space exploitation company is on course to crash into the moon and explode. The Falcon 9 booster was launched in 2015, but after completing its mission, it did not have enough fuel to return towards Earth and instead remained in space. Astronomer Jonathan McDowell told BBC News it will be the first known uncontrolled rocket collision with the moon, but the effects will be minor, he says. The rocket was abandoned in high orbit seven years ago after it completed a mission to send a space weather satellite on a million-mile journey. It was a part of Mr. Musk's space exploitation program SpaceX, a commercial company that ultimately aims to get humans living on another planet. Since 2015, the rocket has been pulled by different gravitational forces of the Earth, Moon, and Sun. Making its path somewhat chaotic explains Professor McDowell from the U.S.-based Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. It's been dead just following the laws of gravity. It joined millions of other pieces of space junk machinery discarded in space after completing missions without enough energy to return to Earth. Over the decades, there have been maybe 50 large objects that we've totally lost track of. This may have happened a bunch of times before, we just didn't notice. This would be the first confirmed case, Professor McDowell says. SpaceX will be getting to the moon a bit more than a month from now, far earlier than expected, but it's all by accident, and it'll cause a bit of a mess. SpaceX, the rocket company started by Elon Musk, has been selected by NASA to provide the spaceship that will take its astronauts back to the surface of the moon. That is still years away. Instead, it is the four-ton upper stage of the SpaceX rocket launched seven years ago that is to crash into the moon on March 4th, based on recent observations and calculations by amateur astronomers. Impact is predicted for 7.25 a.m. Eastern Time. And while there is still some uncertainty of the exact time and place, the rocket piece is not going to miss the moon, said Bill Gray, developer of Project Pluto, a suit of astronomical software used to calculate the orbits of asteroids and comets. It's quite certain it's going to hit, and it will hit within a few minutes of when it was predicted and probably within a few kilometers, Mr. Gray said. Number 2. Collision Course Bill Gray, who writes software to track near-end Earth objects, asteroids, minor planets, and comets, has said the Falcon 9's upper stage will very likely hit the far side of the moon, near the equator on March 4th. Since the beginning of the space age, various human-made artifacts have headed off into the solar system, not necessarily expected to be seen again. That includes Mr. Musk's Tesla Roadster, which was sent on the first launch of SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket in 2018 to an orbit passing Mars. But sometimes they come back around, like in 2020 when a newly discovered mystery object turned out to be a part of a rocket launched in 1966 during NASA's Surveyor missions to the moon. Mr. Gray has for four years followed this particular piece of SpaceX detritus, which helped launch the Deep Space Climate Observatory for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration on February 11, 2015. That observatory, also known by the shortened name Discover, was headed to a spot about a million miles from Earth where it can provide early warning of potentially destructive eruptions of energetic particles from the sun. Discover was originally called Triana, an Earth observation mission championed by Al Gore when he was vice president. The spacecraft, derisively called Gorsat, was put into storage for years until it was adapted for use as a solar storm warning system. Today, it regularly captures images of the whole of planet Earth from space, the original purpose of Triana, including instances when the moon crosses in front of the planet. Most of the time, 
The upper stage of a Falcon 9 rocket is pushed back into Earth's atmosphere after it has delivered its payload to orbit, a tidy way to avoid cluttering space. But this upper stage needed all of its propellant to send Discover on its way to its distant destination, and it ended up in a very high, elongated orbit around Earth, passing the orbit of the Moon. That opened a possibility of a collision someday. The motion of the Falcon 9 stage, dead and uncontrolled, is determined primarily by the gravitational pull of the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun, and a nudge of pressure from sunlight. Debris in low Earth orbit is closely tracked because of the danger to satellites and the International Space Station, but more distant objects like the Discover rocket are mostly forgotten. As far as I know, I am the only person tracking these things, Mr. Gray said. While numerous spacecrafts sent to the moon have crashed there, this appears to be the first time that something from Earth not aimed at the moon will end up there. On January 5th, the rocket stage passed less than 6,000 miles from the moon. The moon's gravity swung it on a course that looked like it might later cross paths with the moon. Mr. Gray put out a request to amateur astronomers to take a look when the object zipped past the moon last week. One of the people who answered the call was Pete Burtwistle, a retired information technology professor who lives about 50 miles west of London. On Thursday last week, the domed 16-inch telescope in his garden, grandly named the Great Shepherd Observatory, pointed at the part of the sky where the rocket stage zipped past in a few minutes. This thing's moving pretty fast, Mr. Burtwistle said. The observations pin down the trajectory enough to predict an impact. Astronomers will have a chance to take one more look next month before the rocket stage swings out beyond the moon one last time. It should then come in and hit the far side of the moon out of sight of anyone from Earth. NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter will not be in a position to see the impact live, but it will later pass over the expected impact site and take photographs of the freshly excavated crater. Mark Robinson, a professor of Earth and Space Exploration at Arizona State University, who serves as the principal investigator for the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter's camera, said he expected four tons of metal hitting at a speed of some 5,700 miles per hour would carve out a divot 10 to 20 meters wide or up to 65 feet in diameter. That will give scientists a look at what lies below the surface, and unlike meteor strikes, they will know exactly the size and time of the impact. Number one, not a big deal. Gray has a forecast that the long, cylindrical rocket should land somewhere around the moon's equator at its far side, meaning that the impact will likely go unobserved, but its trajectory isn't certain and could be altered by a few factors, including radiation pressure from sunlight, which could cause the rocket to tumble sideways. Space junk can be a little tricky, Gray wrote in the blog post. I have a fairly complete mathematical model of what the Earth, Moon, Sun, and planets are doing and how their gravity is affecting the object. I have a rough idea of how much sunlight is pushing outward on the object, gently pushing it away from the sun. However, the actual effects of the sunlight are hard to predict perfectly. It doesn't just push outwards, some of it bounces sideways. The impact of the chunk of the SpaceX rocket, which weighs four tons, on the moon will not be visible from Earth in real time. But it will leave a crater that scientists will be able to observe with spacecrafts and satellites such as NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter or India's Chandrayaan-2, and thus learn more about the geology of the moon. Spacecrafts have intentionally crashed into the moon before for scientific purposes, such as during the Apollo missions to test seismometers. In 2009, NASA sent a rocket stage hurling into the moon near its south pole to look for water, but most rockets do not go so far from Earth. SpaceX brings its rocket boosters back through the Earth's atmosphere so they disintegrate over the ocean. The first stage is recovered and reused. Gray said there could be more unintentional crashes into the moon in the future as the U.S. and Chinese space programs, in particular, leave more junk in orbit. The U.S., together with international partners, is already planning a space station to orbit the moon. 
McDowell noted these events start to be problematic when there's a lot more traffic. It's actually no one's job to keep track of the junk that we leave out in deep Earth orbit. He said, I think now's the time to start regulating it. SpaceX did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Elon Musk's company is currently developing a lunar lander that should allow NASA to send astronauts back to the moon by 2025 at the earliest. Do let us know in the comments what your thoughts are about the SpaceX missions. Thanks for watching.